Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Edwin Ritchie. He's with the University of Kentucky's Extension Soil Scientist there. Good morning, Edwin. Good morning. Now, I'm glad you're here today because I'm, you probably get asked this quite a bit. You know, are the University of Kentucky soil samples enough for that yield? You get asked that a lot and I think the basis of that is our soil fertility recommendations are probably the most conservative around. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a private lab that might uh, recommend 120 pounds of K2O when we're recommending 50. Well, more is better, right? More of a good thing isn't always a good thing or might not be necessary. So, so give me a little background about the basis of how when you bring your soil sample in, it gets sent to the lab, how are those recommend recommendations developed? So the recommendations were developed over time. They did calibration and correlation experiments. We have a set soil test value. We add certain amounts of fertilizer at different rates to these different soil test, initial soil test values, and then see how they yield. So based over time, if I had, let's say, a soil test P of 12 and I added 100 pounds, 150, 200, well, we maxed out at 120 pounds, so we don't need to add that 150 or that 200 pound. Mm -hmm. So that was done over time, and we really don't go back every year and reevaluate it specifically like that. But I'm a soil fertility guy. There's probably six of us in the university, and we look at that. You know, hey, I've got a soil fertility test out here. Are we hurting ourselves by not um, adding more fertilizer? Mm -hmm. And thus, so far, the answer is no, we're not hurting ourselves. We're adding enough. And the university is based on research. The recommendations that we make are based on solid, over the years, numerous years, of research-based information. They are research-based. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so we know it works because you guys have plots on the farm at, at Princeton and in Lexington and across the state where we have the trials that follow the University of Kentucky's recommendations. Yes, and actually I said we typically don't this year. I received funding from the Kentucky Small um, Soybean Board mm -hmm. and we're actually reevaluating the soil fertility recommendations for soybean. So we have our recommended rate 25% less, 25% more. And we're going to compare that to no no fertilizer addition and see how that works out. So yes, it's research based and we, we want, the last thing we want to do is to hurt a farmer's um, profit. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways to lose money in a soil fertility program, applying it when you don't need to or not applying it when you should. And we want to make sure that we don't hurt you either way. And so when somebody comes to you and says, well, I went to a private lab, I've got my soil test back, and they recommend way more fertilizer, what would you say to them? I would say you probably don't need it. And if, assuming if it is a Malik, we use the Malik 3 extraction in Kentucky at UK. If it is a Malik 3 extraction, you can take their results and use our recommendations. Mm -hmm. The results should be the same. It just comes down to a different philosophy. Mm -hmm. Like my father-in-law, he likes to do stocks and short sales and all that. My dad is a mutual fund and bonds kind of guy. Which one's right, which one's wrong? They're different philosophies. So that's the same thing it comes down to with soil testing. And you know, and when I think some people get caught up in the, you know, you read in the magazines about these record yields and they've used so much nitrogen, but is, does that pay on the economic side as well? I would say generally not. Um, one of the things I remember from school, it's bucks in the bank not bushels in the bin, mm -hmm. it's paying the bills. So I can maybe make more money at 175 bushel corn than I am at 250 bushel corn, depending on the inputs that I put in. So, and just because you put more inputs doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have that 75 bushel yield increase either. Yeah. We recommend enough to make sure you do not limit yield. And it's part of an entire package. Exactly. And so what you guys do is just to help pu piece the puzzle together to make sure that hopefully at the end the farmer's profitable. That's right. And yeah. we 
and maintaining the soil and the environment and all those things go into play and so I know that as extension agents we appreciate the work you do on this and thanks for bringing this to our attention well, today. appreciate you having me today. All right. Well if you have any questions contact your local extension office we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.